What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's video. Reacting to 10 Worst Bass Tones in Super Famous Songs by Scott's Bass Lessons. So what's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be reacting to 10 Worst Bass Lines in Super Famous Songs by Scott's Bass Lessons. Now, if you've not already subscribed to Scott's Bass Lessons, go and do so now. Probably one of the best bass channels on YouTube. Some of you may or may not know, but I started off as a bass player, and I'm primarily a bass player to some people and primarily a guitar player to other people, depending on who knows me. Um, but yeah, absolutely go and subscribe to Scott's Bass Lessons, fantastic YouTuber for all things bass. And also I included the original link for the original video in the description. Please go and give that a like. And on my video, this video, please leave a comment on what you'd like to see me react to next. Now, let us get to it. Hey, Sky from SBL, and today we are going to be delving into the 10 worst bass tones of all time in amazing songs as voted by you. I put up a ah. poll to ask you guys what you thought were the worst bass tones of all time, and this is the list that you came up with, and it's controversial. James Jameson, Flea, what? Chaco what? Pistorius, what? what? I'm going to be telling you what I think of each of Amazing. these bass tones as we go through this video. So let me know if... But above all, everybody, Homer's bass tone. Homer's bass tone. Homer's bass tone is the best. Some of you don't remember. Homer rocked the bass. Homer rocked the bass, man. If you agree in the comments below, number one, is it objectively a bad bass tone? Number two, does it work great in the mix? And number three, have you yeah. got any bass tones that you'd like to well, vote for and get on this list? Now, with that said, let's jump in. Now, first up, and definitely one of the most popular ones whoa, that you whoa, guys whoa, voted. Whoa, 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 whoa. That can't be one of the worst bass tones ever. There is no bass. Are they talking about the absence of bass on Injustice for All? There's like arguably no audible bass at all. You know, we've all seen the interview um, from the engineer that, you know, when Lars, okay, bring it down to where it's barely audible and then go eight dBs lower. And he looked over to James and was like, is he serious? And yeah, like they just completely buried Jason's bass on this mix. So I don't know how this is even <laughs> in this list at all, period, but let's find out. For was Jason Newstead on the album and Justice For All. And this is actually the track and Justice For All. First of all, let's listen to a little snippet of the original track. Here we go. There's almost no bass on that track, right? It yes, exactly. There's almost no bass on that track. And I want to remind everybody once again, for any video like this, where there's tonal shootouts, tonal comparisons, do not be listening to this, watching this on just the built-in speakers on your smartphone. It is not gonna do it any justice, especially when we're talking about bass and the bass guitar. Yeah, be watching this with some really good quality earbuds or headphones or on a decent sound system. And yes, on there, even with I've got really high quality in-ear monitors that I use for this. And yeah, there's, there's, uh, and again, I've heard this album since it came out in 98. And it's always like, what bass? What bass? 
it's just pretty much not there. So first of all, let's find out why it's not there. There's a whole story behind that. And then I'm gonna play you the isolated bass track of Jason Newstead on this album. And I think that you'll be surprised to hear the bass tone. And he goes, okay, now the bass. This is what I was That's talking about. Part. All right, I want you to drop the bass level down in the mix where you barely audibly can hear it. I thought it was a joke. So I did that. And then for this, I said, all right, drop it down another six to eight dB. Wow. I looked at Hatfield like this. I said, is this guy serious? Now that was Steve Thompson, the mix engineer on the actual album, talking about his Still never understood that. You know, like as much as Metallica is awesome, Lars is kind of an idiot when it comes to several things. Okay. You know, he and he is not only a drummer. I know a lot of people like to say certain things about Lars's drumming, but you know, he's also a key songwriter for Metallica. But two bonehead sonic mistakes that Lars made. One, and Justice for All, making the bass inaudible. Two, Saint Anger, that snare sound. Come on, Lars. Lars, just you can help write the songs and play the drums. We're not going to let you make any more decisions, Lars. Illustration <laughs> with Lars. But the bass, what did that actually sound like? Well, it sounded like this, and it sounds killing. Fits. So it's not that it's a bad bass tone. It's a really good bass tone for... It's just the bass tone was never game, there. So. Yeah. So next up is Ross Valerie of Journey, and the track is Don't Stop Believing. First of all, we're going to listen to the track really? just for a few seconds, get a vibe, and then a we're going to listen to it. the bass line isolated so we can see what it really sounded like without the track. Here we go. It's a great bass though. A lot of chorus on it. It's a pick. It's a song. Yep, a lot of chorus. I dig it. You can hear it with a pick. It's got like a ton of chorus on it. Yeah. You're probably not going to turn up to a gig and use that bass sound. Objectively, it's a bad sound. I disagree with that. To me, that sounds very much like a Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses bass tone. A lot of chorus and that attack with that pick. And, you know, it's got a lot of nice, you know, crispness to it. It's got some brightness to it. I don't see anything wrong with that bass tone in the mix or soloed out. I think it could work for a lot of things. It's objective, but yeah, you know, right away you hear, okay, a lot of chorus on that bass tone and with a pick, it's a good sound. Good sound for anything, if you ask me. This does not belong on the list. Just like, you know, Jason Newstead's Injustice for All doesn't belong on the list because there is no bass tone on the original. When you play the isolated track of it, oh yeah, it's a great bass tone. But this one just doesn't, it's in the mix. You can absolutely hear it, but it doesn't belong there in my humble opinion. I would just say like it's really unique, but for me, I think it works well really great in this track. Let me know what obviously what you think in the comments. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is still great. Okay, next up is Flea. The track is All Around uh -huh. the World by the Chili Peppers. A lot of you said that this was the worst bass tone that you ever heard. So really? let's check it out no, and no, no. see what you think. You know, like, and I might be a little biased from, from being a enormous fan of Flea, but that's just a high gain bass tone. It's a lot of fuzz on it. That is just a distorted, gnarly, nasty bass tone. That's what he's going for there. I don't get it. There's nothing wrong with that. Just a nice, gnarly, high gain bass tone. Huh. Another one that I feel does not belong here at all. But then again, this is not Scott's opinion. This is Scott's Bass Lessons viewers voted as the worst bass tones ever. So I'm still not getting it, guys. I'm still not getting it, guys and gals. Oh, I know what you guys mean. 
I know what you guys mean, but it's just like, I think it suits the track really well. Uh, for me, is this a bad tone? bass yeah. tone? Like, for anything other than this track, probably yes. I think that it's oh, an artistic no. choice. And I will say that when it gets into the verse, the bass tone is killing. Check this out. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, but that's kind of totally, that's totally an apples to oranges sound. The intro is that high gain, fuzz, distorted, all out bass line with a ton of gain and fuzz, distortion, overdrive, whatever on it. But then as soon as it kicks in, he goes into your typical funk bass tone, really clean, really snappy, nice and crisp, nice and bright for, you know, really kind of finger style and slap and pop type stuff. Yeah, the tone in here is great as well, too. I don't remember many times where I didn't like Flea's tone. It's, uh, you know, whether it be mainly the Music Man era, which when I've been told in the studio on tour, he'd use Ernie Ball Music Man basses. He, he'd be using Stingrays. But I was told quite often in the uh, Mer uh, Stingray era that in the studio, he was actually using Alembics quite a bit. That's when he was still using the Stingrays live. But now he's just all about the signature jazz bass that he's got. But in any era of his tone, I never remember a time that I didn't love his bass tone. Like that's a killing bass tone. Oh yeah. Completely different to the intro. Yeah, it's clean. So I love this bass tone. Clean and compressed. Okay, so next up is definitely going to be a little controversial. It is Verdine White, the track September with the band Earth, Wind and Fire. Oh, In the like track, class. it sounds great, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know what's going on with the the viewers of Scott's bass lessons here. I not a single bass tone thus far that I have heard that I was like, oh yeah, that's that's a horrible bass tone. Like you know, that's a fantastic bass tone, fantastic player, fantastic bass line. What what gives? What gives viewers of Scott's bass lessons? So it's not for me. It's not a bad bass tone. I think it seems really compressed. Can you hear the clipping? That clipping. That clipping sounds like to me, it's heavily compressed. I'm hearing some some serious compression in there. Now that it's isolated and soloed out, you can hear it a little more. But here's the thing: in the mix, it sounded great. Soloed out. If I had that bass tone. I might be like, oh, okay, you know, it, the compression is 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 coming down a little too hard. Either that, or maybe what's happening is it's like a P bass or something like that, and the strings are maybe hitting against the magnetic pole pieces, something like that. It's it's a combination of that or too much compression or something. But it also sounds like he might have flat wounds on a P bass. I'm thinking that may be what's going on tonally there. But like I said, you know, in the mix, it sounded great. I think that what's happening there is the strings are hitting the pole pieces of the bass. I think that's Maybe. that clack. So I wouldn't say it's a bad bass tone, but it's definitely got issues with that clacking on the pickups. Next up is Paul McCartney. The track is Something by The Beatles. And this for me, this is a little controversial as well because mm. this is such a great bass line. I've not really listened to the bass tone too much, but oh, I love the track. So. Let's jump in. Oh, okay, I was just about to ask. I was just about to ask the whole class here at Scott's Bass Lessons, which era of bass is this for him? Is this his Hoffner bass era, or is it his Rickenbacker bass era? I don't even know what he's used in the more modern era, but when I hear Paul McCartney bass lines, I think of two things. I think of the Hoffner, a.k.a. that at later ended up being dubbed because of Paul and the success of the Beatles as the Beatle bass. No, it wasn't called a Beatle bass. It was called a Hoffner. And his Rickenbacker area. At least that's what I always remember. I know he probably had a ton of different ones. 
and I'm wondering if, because this is the picture he threw up in there, it's going to be just audio, is that actually on the Hofner? Love that bit. Objectively, like it's just super old school sounding. Is it a bad bass tone? Not. Okay, so if I walked into a bass shop and somebody's playing there with that tone, I might think it's pretty crap. <laughs> what it sounds like to me is it does sound like it is most likely the Hofner. It has that hollow body kind of sound. And it definitely, to me, sounds like he's got flat wound strings on it. And I think I'm hearing the attack of a pick. I don't think I'm hearing fingers. So again, for me, for myself, I don't like that type of tone. But you know, my style of bass playing, I like something with a lot more brightness, a lot more definition, a lot more of an attack. Myself, personally, you know, kind of, I'm my tonal uh, preference is more like what fleas would be. I want a distorted tone sometimes, and I want a clean tone with some nice snap to it. But that's just me. But I don't necessarily think that this is a bad bass tone, especially for, you know, classic rock type stuff. And I know a lot of players and a lot of people prefer that type of tone. Very bottomy, not a lot of mid, not a lot of top, more or less the tone that you wouldn't necessarily be able to hear the bass line's definition out of the mix, but more that you can feel it, that it more sonically fills out the sound. And you know what? Works great for the Beatles and works great for this track, I'm sure, you know? <laughs> you know, they're, never, they're not going to be sort of like ripping out any Marcus Miller lines. <sighs> I'm on the fence. Let me know in the comments. So next up is a name that I never thought I'd be mentioning on a list like this. It is the legendary, the one and only James Jameson. No. The track is What's Going On. Let's take a listen to the original. Really? Mother, mother, there's too many of you cry. What? What? Okay, like I said, Paul McCartney on the last one, I was kind of eh. On, you know, but then again, that was more or less just a personal preference. But come on, man, the goat, the goat, Jameson, and that fits perfectly into this song. You know, very bottomy, a P bass with the foam mutes on the bridge. As we all know, that was the Jameson sound while well, using the hook. Like, he's probably going to play his soloed out to us. And again, it's going to probably be. The same thing that I think about the last McCartney line. Not the tone that I would go for, but I like a lot more funk, a lot more thump, a lot more clack, a lot more that sort of tone, personally, but it, 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 it's the GOAT with one of the most iconic songs from the Motown era. Yes, what is going on? Yes, Marvin, what is going on? What's going on with the viewers of Scott's bass lesson? Like, seriously. The nothing, this, I, brother, it's brother, the best brother, bass tone I've ever heard for this, in this song. Yes. I mean, it's just, I absolutely down. love it. P bass, flat wound, you know not recording the B-15, it's actually an Acme DI. As a solo bass tone, maybe not. Ain't nothing okay. wrong with that. I'm gonna, yeah. Okay, so I, I, I understand. Now, that's the exact type of bass tone that I was talking about. I know a lot of players, not just bass players, but a lot of people, producers, engineers, people in the band would rather much have a tone like Jane Jameson's than a tone like I would bring to the table. Like I say, my tonal tastes are more in line with somebody like Flea. You know what I mean? More people are going to like that bass tone than the flea bass tone or the bass tone that I'm going to... And let's not forget, Jameson is the GOAT. This bass player with this bass and this bass tone has been on more hit songs than any bass player ever has and probably ever will be. 
because of the way that Motown used to do thing. And he was part of the Funk Brothers in Motown Studios that Hitsville, USA, that would, you know, record all the tracks for all the solo artists. It was one band with some rotating members that would record all those tracks. This here be the GOAT. You don't get to be the GOAT for no damn reason. I'm guessing the bass tone is fine, even though it's not personally what I would like. I'm a different player. I'm a different player. But come on. Yes, just Marvin, what's going on? Where you guys are coming from with this, but I don't know if I can agree with you wholeheartedly. It's it's James Jameson. Yep. So next up was another huge shock to me, Jaco Pistorius, Liberty City on the Word of Mouth album. So we're gonna listen to the original and and then I'll give you my opinion. Let's jump in. It sounds like Jocko. It sounds like typical Jocko tone. Jocko fretless tone. It sounds like Jocko. I do not know what's going on with the viewers of Scott's Space Lessons at all. So you guys got maybe one out of everything that we've, uh, and, and still that was arguable, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. That's one of the coolest fretless sounds of all time. What are you guys thinking? Are your ears drawn on? <laughs> No, I'm not having it. I disagree with everybody who thinks this is a crap sound. It's amazing. Wow. So next up is John Entwistle. The track is The Real Me, the band obviously The Who. What? So let's listen to the original. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Now, this is the rock and roll bass goat. Definitely one of them. Now, now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know who was the first to do this with bass tone. You see, I'm a huge fan of bass tone that you can really hear in the mix, that you can hear every little intricate thing that the bass player does. I like the kind of bass tone that in a band, a rock band, with a wall of guitars, with you know tube amps cranked high gain, if a bass player does a tap harmonic on the 18th fret of the G string, I like the kind of bass tone that allows that to ring out. Now, guys like John Entwistle, Chris Squire, Getty Lee, Doug Pinnock, Billy Sheen, going back in the day before all the modern technology that we had, what they did to achieve that tone was they biamped or split their tone. They would actually go out of like a Y cable or an ABY box. They would go into one guitar amp for their highs and they would have it slightly distorted. And they would go into a bass amp for their lows that would be clean. Because usually if you were to distort a bass signal, the bottom end kind of disappears. But they combated this by basically biamping. Billy Sheen on his bass, he has his basses set up as stereo. His neck pickup and his P bass pickup are separate. They go to separate amps. He has that set up directly out of his bass. Now guys like John Entwistle, Chris Squire, and Getty Lee, well, you know, when they got their Rickenbacker basses, they could run it stereo that way too. But that's how these guys made bass tones that still had that nice big fat bottom end because the bass signal or all the lows went to an actual bass amp which was not distorted which was clean loud clean bass but their high mids and their highs went to a guitar amp with some distortion on it that's what gave them that brightness that cut nowadays with all these effects units and effects pedals you can get a bass overdrive or a bass distortion that has a blend knob that allows you to mix your clean signal with the distorted signal so you do not have to lug around two amps like that. 
But imagine that, you know, the bass players that guys like me really loved and grew up listening to, what they went through so that they could just basically be heard. Not only have that great heavy bass sound, but I want to, you know, fill up the bottom end, but I want actually people to hear the brightness, the little intricate lines that I was doing. And Entwistle was one of the pioneers of that because he was one of the first bass players in rock bands to really be playing solos and really jamming it up on the bass and not just being the quintessential, you know, just 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 fill out the bottom end, just play the root notes of the guitar. No, Entwistle was a total innovator and badass. The GOAT of rock bass players. Yes, that's what I would like to say. And see what we think. Oh, that's an awesome bass tone. It's a bit of a gnarly bass tone, isn't it? Yeah. It's gnarly in an awesome way. Come on. That is bottomy. He's not losing any of his low end. He's doing his job as the bass player in the band. And he's just rocking it out. It's got, it's not super distorted. It's got just enough distortion that you get that bit of that grit and you can hear the crispness of every note, every riff that he's playing. Because He's not playing basic little slow, little easy little bass lines. He's killing it in this track. He's riffing. He's ripping it up. He's doing more than Pete Townsend is. He's doing more than the guitar player is in this song. He's killing it. It's a great bass tone. It's good soloed and it works in the mix. I give it both thumbs up myself. That's just me though. Pretty gnarly. I just think I don't like the mix. It could be, yeah, better. So next up, and this was really popular, I would say, number one was the Jason Newstead thing, second was this. Okay, so it's Fieldy's bass tone on all of the corn stuff by the sounds of okay. it. You, just, you guys just don't like his bass tone, okay? So I've picked Freak on a Leash, because it's obviously a Okay, here's, here's, here's one that I'll kind of agree with. Although, although, Corn and Fieldy's thing, I've seen where he demonstrated it in another video before. He's kind of just doing percussion. You know, most of his bass lines, there's not even a lot of actual notes. They're tuned so incredibly low. It's like his sort of version of slap, and it is unique. It works for Corn. It's the thing that is Corn, and they've sold they've sold a couple records, so obviously there's something that's working there, but this one is one. This is the first one that I downright agree with. I don't like it. I get it. But then again, you know, it's 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 their thing. So trying to be more open-minded in my old age. A super popular track. We'll listen to that and then we're gonna to listen to the isolated bass track. Very Use how to look. I kind of like that. One note there. There's not much note behind it, obviously. It's more exactly. than anything, isn't it? There's notes. Ah, uh, got it. There, it sounds pretty decent. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can hardly hear what note it is. I get where you guys are coming from. Loads of bottom end. Strange top end, no middle yeah. at all. No notes, just like. But you know what though? That's Korn's thing. When I heard those low notes, what he was doing there, it didn't sound too bad there. It's just, you know, the thing that he's doing most of the time is, is more percussive than anything else. I guess it's, you know what though? It is actually really unique. Fieldy's got his own sort of metal funk slap thing going on eh, but i get it this is one that i kind of agree on but i'm starting to back off and you know what in the context of corn and the song it works oh one one good note there now finally we've got a second appearance by the one and only 
Flea, and this, a uh, ton of you voted for Flea and this specific video as well. Okay. I've heard it before, let's, it's been a, a while since I've watched it, before. but let's check it out. And again, in the comments, let me know if you agree, disagree, and all of that good stuff. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, okay, that sounds kind of bad, but it looks like an odd video where he's just, I don't know, out in the Hollywood Hills somewhere um, with an amp and a pedal board just giving her, and, and his playing sounds kind of like a little bit sloppy too. You know, sometimes, I love Flea, I think this is the one time where I'm not liking his tone so much, and sometimes his playing when he tries to go a little too to the outside and tries to be a little too punk rock, you know, which, again, punk is not necessarily a style that myself, I was a huge fan of, but I know that a lot of people were influenced by punk, Flea in particular. Um, so, yeah, this here so far I'm starting to agree with a little bit, and I never thought that I would because I love 98% of what Flea does. Yeah, it's not good at all. Yeah, I really don't like that bass tone. <laughs> Sorry, Flea, you're an awesome player, but I don't like that bass tone. I agree. Flea, I love you, but that tone, no. Bass tone. So guys, let me know what you think. Do you agree, disagree with the bass tones on this list? Should they be on there? Shouldn't they be on there? And did we miss any off, you know, that should have been on there? Let me know in the comments below. The thing that I came away with after watching all of these videos and listening to them, checking them out, is that in, for the most part, I actually think even when it's a really crappy bass tone, in the right context, in the right mix, yep. it can really bring the track alive. So I think That's it's a lot, there's a lot of art there's behind it, right? Mix. It's sort of like, yeah, objectively on its own, it sounds a bit crappy, but in the mix of the song, yep. it can actually give the song a real vibe, a real kind of just individuality mm -hmm. that it wouldn't have it without that bass tone. So I think a lot of the time, it depends. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments your thoughts on this. And as always, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed. All righty. All righty, you know, I don't know. I disagreed with most of those. There was only two, maybe three that I agreed with out of those 10. So... Yeah, Scott's Bass Lesson listeners, um, I don't know what's up with y'all. <laughs> I really, really, really don't. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so um, if you have not subscribed to Scott's Bass Lessons already, go there and subscribe. If you are a bass player, you must, you must be subscribed to Scott's Bass Lessons. Also, go to the original video. I have a link in the description below and give the original video a like as well. And on this video, my video, please leave a comment on something you'd like me to react to next. Thanks for checking out this video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, click the notification bell, like, comment, and share. It doesn't cost a thing and would really help out the channel. Also, please subscribe to my other channel, GK Mac Music, for some live looping live streams with a side of jackassery, some original music, and some short content also with a side of jackassery. If you'd like to help out the channel financially, you can buy some merch at the merch store or you can become a channel member. As always, everyone, thanks so much for your continued support. Do what makes you happy.